I believe in long money. I want motherfuckers with 401ks, mm. pension plans, yeah. people like that. I don't want nobody who just, you know, I don't want dope. I, I, I'm not knocking dope boys. If you're a dope boy, that's fine. But that money, that money, it doesn't last. No more. I never pull up with that list in the pole. And I smoke cigars. It ain't just for the show. I'm blessed from the dope. And no one put my sit out. This is what pop once again. Big Stick Energy Podcast, right here at the Den, 4608 Almeda. So y'all know what the Big Stick Podcast is really all about. You had an introductory, introductory of it. And this podcast is unfiltered. There's no celebrities. It's a real people. And last week, last week I had the guys on. The guys, we had a good time. We talked about a lot of stuff. Of course we talked about sports because that's what we do. We talk about sports. Now, I'm, today I'm switching it up. I got ladies. I got ladies. And this for to be very interesting with what we're about to talk about. And, you know, we don't do no subject. We just kind of come off the head. But I, it was just some stuff that I was thinking about. And some questions I want to ask these ladies. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce these ladies to the audience, and they're going to go from my left all the way around, and then also in the back, they're going to introduce themselves and say just a snippet. We're going to keep it at least 30 seconds. We know how to do a 30-second commercial, so we can do a 30-second introduction. Let's go, Simone. You ready? It's on okay. I'm Simone. I'm originally from Dallas, but I'm living here in Houston, and I'm an attorney. My name is Kyra Coffey. I am originally from Chicago, but I've been here for 14 years now, so I guess I'm a little bit of Houstonian, um, and I'm an attorney as well. My name is Noella. I'm from Dallas. I'm an event planner and a content creator. Go ahead, Slim. It's on you. Hello. I am Shanine, a.k.a. Slim Bell. Uh, I am a financial aid advisor. Hello, I'm Red Snapper. I'm from Louisiana, and I am a mental health clinician. Hold on, time, my. <laughs> keep going. We're going to keep rolling. <laughs> Snapper, we're going to talk about you in a minute. You are in mental health? <laughs> I, you, already, you already know that. I'm hey. not laughing at the mental health part, but no, I'm not laughing at that. But I've been around Red Snapper. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think I was? You should have known. You should have known. Ooh, okay, okay, cool, cool. It, it's a, it's already getting hot in here. So, it's it's just some things I want to talk about with these ladies. And and I know I got guys in the background. Gentlemen, you can all go back to your conversation now that we, now that we now that we started. That was just the introductory. Can I ask y'all a question? And we're going to go around this room. I'm going to ask y'all a question. Okay. Be prepared for this question. <laughs> Do black women settle? Of course. I so, mean, so, look at our options. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well. So, so the reason why I'm asking that is because, of course, there are more black there are more black women than men. Period. And. You meet these guys in a club, bar, H-E-B, wherever it is, you're going to meet them. Some of them don't tell the truth. They may be married, and they should have told you the truth. It, it does. I'm going to keep it real with you. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm married. Uh, so nowadays, they either married, bisexual, Uh, in jail, and if they are single, there's three things that I know women look for: your career, you got a job, good credit. What is for now? <laughs> <laughs> your career, you got a job, good credit. You got your own place, mm -hmm. crib, and you got your own car. Especially right. being in Houston, you got to have a car. You got to be able to get around back and forth. That is right. 
What happens? We're going to start off with the job part. Go ahead, Snapper. You got the okay. mic. Well, okay. Okay. The- Job part in regards to so so let's just say you meet this guy and and I don't want to knock nobody occupation at all if that's what you do that's what you do that's how you survive but let's just say he is working at a fast food restaurant mm-hmm. okay he's a good guy. He got all the qualifications. He, st- he got his own place, got his own car, but he worked at a fast food restaurant. So is this when I first meet him? This, this is, no, no we, we're going to go around the room. Is this when I first meet him or if we get into a relationship? When you, when, when I first, when you meet first him? meet him and he tell you, 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 haven't, you haven't gave him a shot yet. Oh, I don't give a shit where you work because it ain't got shit to do with me. As long as I work, you pay your own bills, don't ask me for shit. I don't care if you work at the waste management. It ain't got shit to do with me. So, so I so don't me, go by money. So, I don't go by money or uh, occupation because okay. it is what it stay is. Stay down. Stay down. Stay on that. So you start, y'all start dating. And the dick is good. So now you're getting feelings. He can still work at the fast food if the dick is good. If the dick is good he and he work at fast food, that's Man, we know we, we know dictate. <laughs> Hold on, we know dictation rules the nation. So I'm still gonna fuck with him. You still gonna fuck with him. What you gotta say, Simone? Go, go to Kyra. I, I'm gathering my thoughts. Yeah, really okay, go ahead. I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, we not we not going nowhere. Because number one, I've dealt with someone before who didn't make as much money as I did, and envy and jealousy is real. And I don't ever want to dim my light or dim what I do because of his insecurities. And it's not even to put him down if he's insecure about it, but a man should want to be like, I can do for my woman. And it puts him in a situation where she could do for him and her more than he could do for both of them. And also, if I'm saying, hey, like this year, I'm traveling every month this year. I got a trip to London for something, Morocco, Ghana. And if you can't tag along... Then, and I'm not paying for, I mean, every now and again, yeah, but it ain't no every trip I'm going on, I'm paying for you too. No. Nah. And also, like, it depends on where a woman is in her life. I want, a, I want a child, and I want a man that can provide for me and a family. And if you work at a fast food place, nah, you can't do that. So we ain't going to waste, waste each other's time. Your dick may be good, but I'm going to never find out about it. Oh, okay. Also, like, I'm, I'm a highly intelligent person, and I'm not dating dumb men anymore. No longer will I date somebody dumber than me. I've done it before. We all know how. <laughs> anyway, we're not going to go there. My point is, so with that, if you are my intellectual equal, at 40 years old, you're not going to be working at a fast food restaurant. And I'm not, I'm also not busting my ass as an attorney every day. And I'm not saying that he's not, but I've worked my ass off to get to where I am. And I'm going to start feeling the way if I'm coming home because I worked hard every day. And you just sitting down watching TV because you worked the four-hour shift, and now you like, who? I cook some fries. I'm tired now. Four-hour Hell shift. No. <laughs> so you like, so you saying, brothers, that they work at the fat food, don't get more than four hours? I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, and so don't you don't want to find, find out. out that. Okay. You no, know, actually, I have worked in the food industry, and it? Like, the shift started like four to like six or something like that. But you was in, But it's not, no, it's not no full-time salary. You was in middle school. Okay. And, <laughs> no, actually, I worked that. Well, anyway, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> what so, you got to say? So I just asked, like, what? what's the end game here? So it's one. Oh. There we go. Yeah. So I'd ask, what's the end game? So it's one thing to work there. It's different when you have a long-term plan. So if you're first on fries, that's cool. But are you trying to stay on fries or are you trying to own it in the end? So if if you're like, okay, I'm going to be here six months. The next six months I'm going to get promoted, la, 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 la. If you have a plan, that's one thing. But if you're just content, no, this isn't going to work. I like nice things. (laughs) And that comes from our family owns a Chick-fil-A. Right. Oh, sorry. We own, yeah. So it's like, it's not about the restaurant, but it's about the plan. But at 37, you still working that plan from the basics, or at 40, you still on fries, you ain't done nothing so, since then? So like, here's, I'm going to answer all of that about on a guy's perspective, because I've been there. I'm going to let Slim speak, and then we'll, then I'll answer that. And we're gonna go, we're gonna, then we're going to go to the next one of that, of that. Go ahead, Slim. So we have different age groups here. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I am over 50. Um, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I was um, like, no, we, okay. You're right. So we have different levels of life. Usually um, at my age, men are already established. They already have uh, experienced life. Um, they've been married. They have grown children. So in my age group, it's a whole different game, okay? Um, so if he's at a fast food restaurant, I'm not laughing at that man for that. You don't know what people have gone through in their life. What you should be worried about is, is someone going to treat you like they want to be treated because life has already happened for us. And that should be your last, <laughs> honestly, you should already have money saved or uh, if not, you need to, you know, really think about what's going on with that person because you could have it all and lose it all. Mm. Mm. So, what does that even mean? When you, ex- the, the component exactly, where you say. Exactly what I said. Grab People the mic go you, through yeah. things in life. Okay. Yeah. You could have it all. Come on, pal. You can have the Get looks. You can have the money. You can have it all, and okay. lose it like that. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. But the component you where you say like that, you got to look at that. Per- what about the person? So you're saying as long as they treat me fine, I'm okay if they're poor. Listen, you can't make love to money. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. When was the last time you dated a broke man? And tell me how it went. I don't look at it as, as broke. I don't look at it as broke. Was it because last week or? <laughs> no, no. That's what I'm saying. You're, I'm, not, I'm not putting down anything that anyone is saying. You have to do what's best for you. I'm in a different, I'm, I'm in a different age group, okay? Most people that I date, they're established people. I'm not looking at it in a perspective of, if he is, if he has this. I'm looking at it as, what can I offer that person? Am I going to be happy with this person? Or am I just looking at his bank account? Because who says who, who, who says that these days in my age group? I don't. But what I'm saying is it's very easy to say you would do something that you've never done. It's very easy to say I'll do it. You've had 50 years to do it, and you haven't for 55. a reason. 55, and you haven't for a reason. That's all I'm saying. Uh, to, to, I'm sorry. Slim? No. Slim? Yeah, to, to Slim's point, I do get it, and I do agree that every person, especially every woman, every woman's perspective and what she wants in a man and what she wants in a partner does change based on where she's at in life. I will say even for myself, my type and what I look for in a guy has changed based on when I was just younger having a good time versus when I'm looking for a man that's more so compatible as a husband and a partner. Versus, you know what I'm saying? So I do get that. And I look at my mom, who's in her 60s, almost 70s, and I look at who she was with when she was married to my dad versus who she has dated in her older life that does more so meet her needs as a partner and compatibility versus as a younger person who's looking for a husband. Like, can you take care of me, my kids, and stuff like that? So the money is not, and you like you mentioned, you said, has he saved? Has he done stuff like that? It's not saying he's a bum or he, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that, but life does happen, and the older you are, I feel like the more grace you have and how that impacts people versus just saying he just broke and he ain't got nothing. Okay, so say what you're going to say, and then we're gonna, I'm going I'm to say what I'm going to say, then we're going to go to the next topic of this whole thing. Okay. And then we have Miss Pam just joined us, so she'll catch up with us on the next one. So I'm just, when you said that, it just made me think of hobosexuals. There's a whole bunch <laughs> of really attractive hobosexual men out there. They look real good. They'll have real good sex with you, but they don't have anything. They'll treat you real nice. They'll mow your lawn. They'll paint the house. They'll do whatever you want, but, they, they, but you're going to be financially responsible for them, so you'd be okay with taking in a, a hobosexual? Okay. <laughs> So, so here's what I'm gonna say. Here's what I, here's what I'm gonna say about that. And Slim, at these ladies haven't gotten to that point in their life yet. So you know we all evolve, men and women. We evolve over the time in our lives. For me, as a man, before I got this business, 
I worked for AT&T for years. I didn't go, so I worked in the office. So uh, what happened was they transferred our department to San Antonio. I didn't go. I, I took my money. I settled. I'll let, you know how it goes when yeah. you take that. Servants. Servants. I took a year off work, got back into work, and I worked as a delivery driver for a year. Started dating this young lady. Let me tell you, <laughs> God is funny. Let me tell you, she told somebody, and, and at that time, I, I'm, I'm a hustler. I'm, I'm out. I'm doing my, as I'm doing the deliver, as I'm a delivery driver. I'm also, I also have my catering business, and also I DJ. So I'm a hustler. I'm gonna get out. I'm a hustler. I'm gonna go get it. But she said. She was an accountant. I'm not going to say for a company or anything like that. She was an accountant. And I helped her start her own business. Helped her start it, got it, you know, got it together, all that. She said, my hustle didn't match her hustle. Do you know that was the driving force for me? To, like, that really just, like, pissed me off and so she started dating some other guy behind my back which is that's fine tell me the truth just let me know what's going on just tell me the truth but it it, it happened and apparently I guess this guy had a career and I get it you look at at that time you're looking out for your kids because you got two kids I don't have that type of money, I guess, that, that, you know, that she was looking for at the time. But I had a goal. I knew I was for to do something else. But the patience wasn't there. Was she aware of your goal? She was aware of everything? Yeah. Well, see, the goal at the time was a food truck. Having my own food truck. She knew that. Because I didn't want a brick and mortar at first. I didn't want. I, I, yeah, you start there. But after all of that happened, God told me, I got something bigger and better for you. So did she ever pour into you with that, with that dream that you had? No. Or was it always? So no. that's selfish if you're saying that you was helping her with her business and she wasn't helping you. But I think the difference, at least in what I'm hearing us saying is, you had a goal. It wasn't just you was, you know, you were one, you had a story because life shifted. And then two, you were doing this, but you also had this going on and that going on. Like you mentioned, uh, I use this example all the time. You mentioned um, garbage disposal, uh, somebody who works for waste management. First of all, waste management make a lot of money if you own it. So I always say, look, if it's a man who, they, they're right, <laughs> hey, it's not. But if a man has a goal and is actively working that goal, it's different to say, oh, I have a goal and you're not doing nothing. Right. But if a man says he has a goal and he's working that goal, oh, I'll pour into it and I have poured into it all day, every day to make sure that, okay, I can help you. Because the goal is if we're together, then I'm feeding into you. And I, if I care about you, whether we end up together or not, it's going to help you in the long run. So I think it's selfish for a woman to be with a man and he has a goal and you don't help him. And it's short-sighted for you to not see that if he's actively working towards it. Now, if he's just saying that and not doing nothing behind it and no action, then no, I, I can't deal with that. Now, now and, and, I, I don't, and I ain't being petty about it, but uh, I've had people that, associates of her and I, that come back and say she's not happy. Like, that ain't my fault. Right. That was her character. That's just you her made character. that decision. To move on, right, and go with that person, and I and I'm gonna say, and, and here's what I'm gonna say: you can sit right here on, on the table and bring us some plates. Yeah, bring us some plates, and I need one, two, three, four, five. I need six plates and forks and knives and whatever. So, since we're on that subject, that was a video went viral of a young lady saying, "I think y'all know what I'm talking about." The, the Cheesecake young, Factory. 
that I, she talking about the police officer is not, and the mailman is not good enough. Oh, okay. and oh, I, I haven't see, seen that. One. I thought you were talking about. Oh, the y'all didn't see no. that one. The chick on there saying that uh, you, the career, okay. yeah, that she would. Oh, okay. That this person ain't good enough. That person, she going down the line. I'm like, bitch, who else? Who else <laughs> left? <laughs> like, who the, what the, the fuck, fuck you want? Huh? Yeah, exactly. Here's my thing that young ladies need to understand and know from a male point of view. At the end of the day, that quick money is don't always last. Right? Oh, no, never. never. Is this on? It's on. It's on. Now, nah, don't put your no, mouth on that. Don't put your mouth on that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to make sure. We're going to get to your favorite subject in a minute. But here's, no, here's what I'm saying it. is, even in this business, I've had young people come and say, man, let me do this, let me do that. That ain't what we do here. I like an older, mature crowd. I believe in long money. I want motherfuckers with 401ks, Mm -hmm. pension plans, people like that. I don't want nobody who just, you know, I don't want dope. I'm not knocking dope boys. If you're a dope boy, that's fine. But that money, that money, it doesn't last long. Give me the people that's gonna come in here every week. Let it grow. And 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 they come in here just to have a good time. They ain't looking for no trouble. And that's the same thing for I'ma say women should see or look for in a guy. The longevity of it. Well well, also it goes to the point of what are you looking for? I'm 51, like like over 50 like her, and at this point of my life, I'm happy, I'm content, I can take care of myself. I don't want a relationship. So for me, as long as you can take care of your own stuff and don't ask me for shit, we, gonna, we can do whatever. We can go to fucking Whataburger. I don't, if, if I enjoy you and we communicate and we have a good vibe, I'm just, I just don't give a fuck. I just want to enjoy life. Have fun with a man, and it is what it is. Because tomorrow, not promise. You can have long money, and then you die tomorrow. Where that money? Go? I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, whatever it is at this present, I go with the present. I don't give a fuck about the future. That's just me. Gotcha. But that's gotcha. Snapper. Gotcha. All right. So the next thing is, <laughs> it's gonna be funny next week when I bring these guys in because they're gonna really just be in. They they gonna be on some other shit. Uh. Credit. Does a man have to have good credit to date you? Here's the thing. I I didn't realize that until a friend of mine asked about this young lady. He said, hey, man, you know this young lady, blah, 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 until I want to date her. I said, all right, cool. So I called her. A friend of mine, I called her. I said, hey, my boy is interested in you. Uh, what's up? And she said, well, how is his credit? I said, what the fuck? Are you serious? How is his fucking credit? I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know women ask about credit. And before I go around the room, I just want to say one thing. This shit is brought to you by Quad Houston, this, se- this session right here. Quad Houston Restaurant and Lounge. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you ladies a plate. While y'all was talking, I'm going to go around. I'm going to make a plate for all of you ladies. And so today is our jambalaya pasta. That's the feature of the day. Okay. It looks good. Jambalaya pasta is the feature of the day. And I got drinks coming, too. Oh, goddamn, Pam, Pam. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Back back to, back to what was going on. Back to what was going on. Because let me tell you, them niggas had something to eat last week. So I, I, I'm so no, because y'all not in the podcast right now. Ne- All right. Next week you can get some. <laughs> No, not because this, because this is for my guests. Okay, so 
Credit, 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 credit. Simone, we're going to let you start with that while I fix y'all play. So my answer is yes, because at my wise age, what I have found is that men with low credit scores tend to be men who like to take financial shortcuts in life. They like the quick, fast money, and I want longevity. I want to be able to retire and things like that. So unless he has the explanation of something like he's divorced, you know, and his ex-wife got the house and didn't pay on the mortgage for a long time. If he has an extenuating circumstance, I will absolutely listen to that, and that's okay. If it was outside of your control. But in the past, when a man has had really bad credit, what you'll see is he's had situations where he went and tried to qualify for something he had no business qualifying for. He was doing some PPP-type EID <laughs> stuff he didn't have no business, and I am not here to support that. Well, to be honest, he does have to have good credit because he will never know if I need to get some tires at Firestone or, you know, I, I need to, he need to get us a loan or whatever. I might need him for that. So, yes, he has to have good credit, decent credit because, if you know, it just, it's just part of like it tells you he's responsible, you know, he's financially stable and – he obviously want to protect his name, his integrity. You know, credit, credit is a lot. It tells about how you think about future and your bills. So I would have to say yes on that one. I'm going to say yes, too, and I'm going to tie it again to what I'm looking for in a man. If I'm looking for a husband and someone that I can build with, I your bills become my bills and your debt becomes my debt and I don't want to marry somebody who is financially irresponsible. Now, I understand that everybody has a story. Financial stories mean something. Now, if it's just a matter of you just spend frivolously and don't try to manage anything, then you're irresponsible and you can't leave me. Again, I want a husband and I want a husband that I can let be the head of the house who leads me and if you're financially irresponsible, then no, you can't leave me. So it's look it go it tells again to the story of who I want in totality and someone who's just all together financially irresponsible cannot be the head of my household. So that's not gonna work. I'm gonna say yes, of course, but it's not like an end all be all deal breaker if it's like trash. But I'm also gonna evaluate why is it trash? Is it because you don't pay your bills? Is it because you got your home foreclosed on and you're trying to build it back up? Like, what's the reasoning behind it is what I will be looking at. And um, or is it just like my cousin said, you were doing a whole bunch of shady shit and you didn't think anybody would find out until now. And now you can't even pay the bills that you have. So I'd really have to evaluate why does it look like this? But you can also have good credit, but have an exorbitant amount of debt, but you pay all your bills on time. So. I agree with these ladies. Um, it's just important to uh, have a strong credit um, life because you really you can have a lot of money and still not be able to get into places that you would like to because of your credit. You can throw money anywhere, but a lot of people trust you um, when you have uh, substantial credit. Um, so, yes, I agree. I agree to a certain extent. Um, like I said, life happens to people. If you can bounce back from that, um, that's great. But uh, otherwise, you should have a strong credit um, standing. They probably finna put me out. <laughs> um, I'm whole. So as far as credit is concerned, uh, I've been on both sides of of the tracks, someone that had no credit, someone that has credit. But I'm whole. I'm bringing everything to the table that I have um, or what I want. I'm not looking for someone to take care of me. I'm looking for a companion, someone to complete what I can't do for myself. Now, again, as we said, credit is important, all of those things, but at least we would have the opportunity to, to build on something. I'm not making, you know, yes, you have to be the head of the household. I want you to be the head of the household. But at the, where I am right now in my life, I'm whole because their credit could be A1. But good credit don't make them stay at home. 
So I want someone that's gonna that's ready to commit, you know, and we can grow and establish together. Yes, it is important, but credit don't make them stay at home. It doesn't make what? Stay at home. Yeah, but the, the dip, yeah, okay. When people say things like that, it makes me think about, but like, it's necessary, but it's not sufficient. Nobody is saying, if you have good credit, I'm going to marry you. But what we are saying is, for some of us, that if you don't, and you don't have a legitimate reason for it, that it's a deal break or it's a problem. So you feel like it's a turn off? Yeah. A turn off. I, I personally don't attract people that don't have good credit, though. So I don't, I don't, I'm not, a, I don't attract that. So hold on, hold on, hold on. So hold on. We we just uh Stacy just came in. I was gonna ask. And, what was what's the question? So the question was, does a man have to have good credit for you to date him? Well, I think that's something that I would like you to have. Like realistically speaking, you know, FICO created the credit score in nineteen eighty nine ish in the late nineteen eighties. So for the black community, having credit trying to deal with credit, maneuvering through credit and wealth management, that's all relatively new. We understand that as black people, we're already operating on a financial literacy curve. And so, you know, I would expect you by the time you're a grown ass man to understand that and be cognizant of that. Also, you know, to that point also, the housing bubble was, what, 08, 09, 010. So we've had seven years plus since then for you to have some foreclosures, for you to, to go into debt and make some bad money moves, and for your credit to be rebuilt by now. So I think that at this point, I think that it is dependent on your age, also, like, what industry you're in, because if you're a business owner, a small business owner, you might utilize uh, more credit and have more liquid in your account, whereas some other people, they utilize less, uh, more liquid and have all the credit in the world and, and thus have a little more financial freedom than people that's, like, hoarding money in their bank accounts. So, <clears throat> bottom line, all you ladies, pretty much what Stacy said, yes and no, Simone, you just had a whole lot of shit to talk about. I mean, about my answer is yes. Yes, uh, okay. it's very important. Okay, what what um well so everybody said yes. It is important. But we know that there is some things that men go through. Because I've obviously I've been in a situation and still kind of going through situations, but you know, I'm I'm good. I'm, it's not great. I'm good. And, and yeah, working on it. So, but here's the here's the thing about that. I've never. They, I just heard of this about credit. Women want guys with good credit. I never that shit never registered to me, and I never. And I'm like, damn. So a nigga gotta get nigga gotta have. A one now, like. But that's that's in long term relationships. You got to understand. That's a difference. But, but, but if you just hanging with somebody, kicking it with somebody, but if you into a long term relationship, then yeah, it's oh necessary. shit. So that's maybe why she ain't want to mess with me no more. I ain't have good credit. <laughs> <though>. I <ain't>. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The the score is not the score is not the price. They depend. Yeah. Look. Okay. So, so, and similar to what we were saying before, it speaks to what is the story and what is he actively doing. If he is working on it or, hey, this happened, you know, yada, 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 I fell on hard times, but this is what I'm doing. And it doesn't come, I don't ask that question off the bat, but when it becomes somebody who I seriously want to talk about or talk to and we start to talk about marriage and longevity, then that will come up. And it doesn't come up as a perspective of condemning him but let me see who you are totality so that I know if the good and bad side of you I want to deal with, just like the good and bad side of me, you should be asking all those questions to understand who I am in totality to see if it works for you or not. Great. We're going to spend some more time on this, or y'all want to go to the next one? 
Okay, cool. Vehicle. The, the, no, no, the reason, I, I, we're going to get to the heart and what the people, what the person really is. Ooh, that's good. And the only reason why we're talking about material, material things is because that's the first thing you see in a person. You see how they dress, what they, you know, maybe what they drive, things like that. And that goes inside with credit, too. So, I mean, would you, but anyway. So the vehicle question does does it does it? I know, and I'm gonna say this, uh, and this is for my mature ladies. I know a vehicle, the car doesn't really matter. It doesn't. But does it? Yes. Okay. <sighs> Reason it? Oh hell yeah! I, I'm I'm a little all over the place. <laughs> and I know this is gonna sound crazy, but seriously, when I when I would meet a nigga or a dude, um, you, you know, say, you say nigga. <laughs> for like kind of like the first time, whatever, whatever. So it was crazy as fuck. I'd be in my uh, one of my spare bedrooms, or if, when I was in an apartment, and so I would tell him, I say, "Oh, park right there. Uh, what car are you in?" So he'd tell me, he would kind of tell me, but then not, and then he parked. And so uh, if he had a, you know, a fucking. Uh, convertible BMW, look me, oh yeah, I'm gonna fuck him tonight. If he had a fucking Corolla, bitch, moving, goodbye. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, because if we gonna go out and hang out, I need you to be riding clean. I'm sorry, that's just me. That's just me. Okay. <laughs> hey, I like that shit. Keep it real. Keep, keep, keep it a buck. Come on, keep it a buck, Simone. No, that sounds crazy. Like, no, I... I've dated millionaires. All of them have one of each. They have a really nice car, and then they have, like, a Prius. They have something practical. And they tend on the first date to pull up in that Prius to see how you won't act. And let me ask you this. Uh, hold on. Before you keep going, was that a white guy driving a Prius? No, he was very black. Oh, <laughs> shit. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> no, he, I, I was very happy with I'm going to say, like, it can't be a hoopty now. <laughs> but if it's a regular type of car, then I'm not going to judge him for it. I'm not going to say, no, I can't talk to you. Like, yes, do I like it? Am I got to be in a nice vehicle and I'm passenger princess? Absolutely. But if it's like, a, you know what I'm saying, it's a, it's a nice car, average car, you, you have it, you know what I'm saying, well kept. Because it could be a dude with a super nice car and he can't pay that bill every month or that takes up all his money and everything. He can't take me on a date because you got to pay, you know what I'm saying, this $1,000 car note that you can't really afford. So if he can afford the car and it's nice, of course, that's a bonus. But if it's an average nice car, I'm not going to knock him for it. Now, if it's something that's beat up, and I'm like, nah, <laughs> can't ride with that one because I can't be in a beat up car. Like, I'm too cute for that, but anyway. Hold on, but I drove a Toyota Corolla before, and, and it was nice. I I don't have nothing against it. And I saved gas on it. I'm, I'm right. chill. What if it's like a nice color supreme? A color? Old school color supreme. Oh, I like that's old school color. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, that, that's, that's a whole different category. That's a whole different because category. Because if... Most of the time, if a guy driving an a old school Cutlass Supreme or old school car, it means he... He got a few cars. He got right, that's not cars. his only car. Yeah, that ain't the only car. car. No. What you got, darling? I'm not a car person, so I don't care. It just needs to be nice, clean, and well-kept. So if it's a Nissan, yay. Just clean and well-kept. As long as you can afford all these dates, I'm fine with that. So okay. I'm, I'm not bothered. And, 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 and I'm going to get to the point, and I'm, everybody going to answer this. Uh, so, and the reason why I'm, I'm going to ask another question after we after we finish with Stacey, so keep going around. Uh, again, I, that doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm at a stage in my life where I just, I'm not looking at that. I, I, I've dated people who have many cars. As long as you have a car, yeah. and you keep it clean. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to ride in my car or keep my car clean or whatever it is. Th those things are just not major things for, for me. I just need a person to be uh, present for me. You, you understand what I, I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. So here's what I'm saying. I understand. You got different levels of people. And it, yeah. Okay. And, and, and what I'm saying is my I'm next, the nice. next question 
it's going to lead up into why I'm, why I'm asking that. Um, Pam? Pam? No, not Noella. Cars don't count for me. I'm not. Ex- that doesn't excite me. No, it doesn't. Cause like like she was saying, they may they may drive a Range Rover, but they going home to their mama. Right, exactly. So so no, the cars don't. Who got? Oh, okay. All right, gotcha. I care more about the cleanliness than the actual car. Like I don't want to sit on any Cheetos and. Your t- your power tools and and trip over your work boots getting in the car. I just don't want to do that. But other than that, I really don't care. And and don't be leaving any uh, residue of anything because if we get pulled over, oh. I don't know you. <laughs> so <laughs> that's more of what I care about. So so w- the reason why the reason why I asked that. So if he the good credit, good job, own place. What if he don't have a car? What if he don't have what? A don't car. Have a car. Why wouldn't you have a car? No. Nah. I'm just saying some yeah, people. Why wouldn't you have a car? No, listen. No, no, no. Listen to me. Yeah, we don't live in the north. I understand that, but LA? you got some guys can't drive. Why? Don't have a, don't have a license. They didn't pay their I'm, child I'm, support I'm, and no. got their license DWI. suspended. DWI. A DWI. Last time I dated somebody who didn't have a license, he had a DUI. Exactly. They can just call me and get an SR twenty two. They too right. stupid. That's why I'm saying I don't date people dumber than me anymore. But that's what extra. I'm. But that's what I'm saying. If he does not have a vehicle, he better it, figure it out. Does it I'm matter? Right. I'm looking at your maturity if you don't have a car. If we're down here where nothing is close, everything's pretty spread out. I also need to make a very important important point, which is that from the would you date this fry clerk, white women don't get these questions. Right. They don't even talk about it. First time somebody ever asked me if I was going to date rich was when we got poor and I had to go to public school. Okay. And I went to public school with these white girls. And the white girls was like, when you grow up, are you going to date rich? I was in the fourth grade. I thought you were rich if you lived in a two-story house. It wasn't until I visited my homegirl in the projects where I realized all of their little townhouses were two-story, and that was not the standard. My point is, I do find it very silly. I'm enjoying this, by the way. But I find it silly that little white girls are taught, they knew by fourth grade, you marry rich. And I was like, huh? Well... My my question to black ladies, because I don't know no white women. <laughs> so when we when you get a Becky on here, we can ask Becky. I, got, I know one. We can get her on here. We can ask her okay, her perspective of uh, and and that's and that's a whole nother subject because because one thing about it, I know black women. I've been around black women all my life. I don't know no white women. I can't ask no white woman, and I don't even know how I feel by asking a white woman a question that I ask y'all because I'm more comfortable. Exactly. She's saying she ain't never had a white man before, so she ain't nothing she can ask her. And it, so it, it's right to my point. I mean, not to my point. It, something happened to me before, I got the, before we got this building. We had a white relative. White relative. Took us all over the place. Edo, Midtown. Heights, all that. We got back in the truck. I had to, I said, hey, man, I, I got to be real with you. He's like, what's up? I say, you got to give me somewhere that my people at. I don't know black people. I mean, I don't know white people. I don't even know how to promote to them. I don't know what to. That's how we got this place. Because I, I had to tell him what, what it was. Because I don't. I, and I ain't got nothing against white people. I don't know. I don't. I just don't know their culture like that. Now, yeah, if you can get Becky on here, we can learn more stuff about their culture. Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. I I meant it. Go ahead. I'll let her talk. No, no, no. no I'm just saying I meant it from the perspective of I, I'm enjoying the conversation, but this is something that we talk about that I know that they don't. Right. This is a discussion. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. 
always have to mimic other culture. We need to keep it in our culture to learn about what we need to either grow or otherwise. Um, we always have to result to a Caucasian person. Why? We, we're all beautiful collectively. But, so why, why do we need to have their perspective? We have our own. And I'm glad you said that because in life, as black people, it's always the standard of white people, and it shouldn't be. And, 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 and the thing is, the reason why I say it shouldn't be is because everything that we do, they take. Everything, if you, everything that we do, the way we walk, the way we talk, our music, our body. Why, why in the 80s and 90s having asses was a problem? Now, now these motherfuckers go out and. and Look at Stacy's. Her butt is huge. Natural. Stacy, let me see. <laughs> anyway. So, no, I'm no. That's the good thing. That's the good thing about this podcast. We gonna get off the subject, and we are gonna get into something real because she's. Because I'm glad she brought that up. I will say, not that I'm saying it's a matter of white women, but I think it's a matter from my perspective. The questions that you ask, and will we do this? Do we want a car, a job, credit, and its own place? That's basic. I shouldn't, if I'm dating, like, that's that's ground zero. I would assume that the type of guy that would even step to me, I would hope that he would see me and be like, yo, I'm not even ready for somebody like her because I need to get my shit together before I even approach her. Is what I would hope that somebody, you know what I'm saying, will look at me and think. Because, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's guys sometimes that I've seen, I'm like, yo, he a bomb-ass dude. But I, I'm not ready for somebody like that. I'm not the type of woman that could fully support or add value to him based on where he's at in life. So let me just admire from afar, and I would hope that a dude would have the same respect for me before coming to me and he ain't really got the basics. All right, ladies. Nobody talk right now. I'm going to say something. And by a show of hands, who grew up with their father in the house? Okay. I have a daughter. My daughter's 25 now. A little part of her teenage life, she stayed with me. I was a single father, Adam. And before then, she stayed with her mother. Even when she was staying with her mom at that young age, when I go get her, I would have to teach her what a man's supposed to be and what a man's supposed to do. As a man, it's very important that we date our daughters. Very important. Now my daughter's 25. She's dating this guy. She asked me a question one time. Did I like, I just say, you the one that got to deal with him, not me. You grown. I can't do nothing about that. As long as he don't touch you in a harmful way, disrespect you, he still better be opening up the doors for you. He still be the, better be the one that's taking care of the, the breadwinner of the household that y'all got, all of that. Even one time, uh, she, had, she was staying with a roommate. She had a roommate. They got behind on the rent because the roommate didn't have the, her half of the money. But the boyfriend was staying there. So, as a dad, what the fuck is he doing there then? My daughter crying, but you know, that's my baby. So, I'm going to take care of my daughter. So, I say, look, I'm going to pay your rent this time. But you need to go back and tell both of them if... Tell them, if your dad got to pay the rent next time, everybody getting the fuck out of there. You're going to be living there by yourself, and he better not bring his ass in there until he contribute. 
does a father play a role, a huge role, with the women uh, or, or ladies in their life? That's my question to you, ladies, because that's because I heard, you know everybody said that somebody created the credit credit and he gotta have this gotta have that. But did you look at your father? Did he have that? I, I'm not saying that nobody didn't. But we also got to look at our dad because I, I, everybody's dad ain't great. Look at Bill Cosby. Ain't great. We got some fucked up shit in our, in our lives as men that come out. So talk about your dad and talk about that role that he played in your life and what's going on next that you're looking I will say absolutely. I was actually having a conversation with the male friend earlier today, and he was talking about, you know, I, I'm going to make sure that I tell my daughter not to look for this and the guy and that, this and the third. And I say, it's not going to matter. I mean, it, it, it is going to matter what you tell her, but what's going to have the difference is what you show her. I said, you're going to be the first example for what she sees and how a man is supposed to treat her. So it's more important an example that you lead by being there and what you show her a man is supposed to do for her. But a thousand times, yes, that relationship that a woman or a daughter or a female has with her dad impacts her dating in so many ways. So I had a stepdad who was in my life growing up, um, but my biological donor was not at all. To this day, he could walk past me. I don't know who he is. Matter of fact, at 36 years old, I reached out to him to have a conversation and he told me no. So it wasn't until I was 29 that I realized the absence that his presence had on my dating relationships. In dating, I was dealing with guys that I should not have dealt with, dealing with relationships that I should not have stayed in because I was trying to prove myself worthy for that man to not leave. And it wasn't until I had to look at myself and be like, okay, Kyra, what's the pattern here and what's going on? And let's fix that on my own and heal from that versus Blaming the guys I'm dealing with or this and the third. But whether a father is there, the example that he leads makes a great impression on how she dates. And if he's not there, it leaves a void that women feel in different ways. Gotcha. Kyle, you know one of them niggas over there might be your daddy. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I ain't talking about that. could be one. Not that kind of daddy. <laughs> I, 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 they, they own it up to be... Thirty-six year old. I mean, okay. All right. All right. What you what you got to say, Snapper? What you got to say? <laughs> well, um, unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity to be raised by a father because my dad died when I was two. Okay. So Good. to be honest, I think because because of how I am now and have been, and my thought process of what a man should look like, I really don't know. So what I do know is that from experiences from other people, you know, maybe some little relationships, TV, I know what how I should be treated. But I didn't get that vision from a dad, you know, the mother, and da- mother, I mean, the daughter and dad dance and all of that, I mean, the daughter and dad dance and things like that. I didn't experience that. So I never really knew, probably still not to today, what a real man is. I, I, I don't know. Wow. And that plays a big part when you haven't seen it. How could you want it of something you never experienced. Great point. Thank you. So I Pam. was, I consider myself blessed because uh, my father is 80 years old now. Um, I'm taking care of him now, but um, yes, he's always been present in my life. Um, he was the Girl Scout dad, did all the things, did all of the Bunsen burners and all kind of creative things. So my dad has been in my life other side of that is he taught me the hardness like get it you know how to I was more he showed me more how to 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 depend on myself now the roles yes but again like I said my dad's 80 so you got to look at the point I think the bigger point of, of the comment I want to make is you may have someone in your in your life, a man in your a father figure. I my dad didn't tell me he loved me until I was an adult. Excuse me, 
Why was why did he think that was appropriate? But it because of how he was raised. Oh, what did your mama say? Your mama allowed? Oh that? no no she not not that she uh, it wasn't. Were they it married? Wasn't a, it was because again you have to look at you have to look at how people were raised. Uh, I can't fault my daddy for how he was raised. Mm. I, I knew because again I went to private school until I graduated high school. I had everything. I never went without. I don't know what it is to have lights turned off. I don't know any of that because my daddy was a provider. So that's how he knew to show love by providing. Okay. Now, flip side to that, like I said, my daddy was the, the you know, took us on trips whenever, every, anytime the field trips. My mom was a stay at home mom. My dad would take off work and take me on the field trip. Thank you. Rode on the back of a motorcycle every day to school <laughs> from my dad. So with all that, um, but once, but now, like I said, turn, the, the, the shoes are on the other foot, I'm taking care of him. So um, I think, yeah, so I I do, I've seen uh, how he, like, again, how he provided for my mom, the things that my mom did, uh, you know, didn't have to do. My mom never worked, never had to work. Uh, So I I did have that opportunity to, you know, to live. uh, Both of my parents are living, and I'm taking care of them, but uh, to see both, to see it. Can I ask you a question? Uh Uh-huh. In dating, did you often look for like your father in the, like how your guy, how your dad was more of a provider? Did you look for that? I in? got married young. Okay, so uh, I left my my dad to my husband. So um, yeah. So uh, I was not raised with my father, but I um, I started late as far as marriage uh, and and starting a family. I wanted to make sure that my children had their father in their life um, because I I didn't want to get married. I didn't want to have any children. And when my mother passed away, um, just things started to get real serious for me as far as my life. So um, I did marry a person that was family-oriented. And till this day, he's a very good father to his children, my our children. So I made sure of that. Uh, never said anything. We didn't, we didn't last 14 years, but um, I made sure that He was always in their life. So um, I didn't have any disgruntled uh, feelings that I didn't have my father there. He is alive. I do call him. We don't have a real close relationship, but I still respect him um, as my father. But, again, I didn't hold any grudges um, because he wasn't in my life. So I just want to applaud you for... It's so rare to hear women that were not raised by their fathers say, I saw what it was like for me. I didn't want it for my children, and so I chose to do differently. Instead, I know women who two, three generations, um, you know, their mom was a single mother because she had the child, you know, without being married, and then they do the same thing and expect different results, and that just, I don't understand that. But then they blame the guy. Oh, he wasn't this, he wasn't that. But you're asking for a lifetime commitment from somebody who won't even make you their girlfriend. But it's also them dealing with not having healed in their own right and being attracted to an absent figure that they don't have that example to be attracted to. And I say that as a person who was dating guys who were emotionally unavailable, and I did not realize it at first until I took a step back and was like, what the? I'm too good of a person to be dealing with this shit. What the fuck is the problem? <clears throat> And so I had to look at myself and see what was going on and heal that to no longer date that type of guy. Noella, you got anything? Or you? Okay. I was just waiting my turn. So I grew up with my dad. Me and Simone damn near grew up in the same house. We're cousins. Your dad is a single daddy. <laughs> You're not a thing with you. Oh my God. Right, <laughs> single dad. <laughs> my parents were together until my mom died when I was 20. And so my dad wasn't the guy that told me he loved me all the time, but he definitely led by example. Like he, like 12 years of Catholic. Catholic school, two years of college, I don't know, I totaled two cars, like basically anything I want, he was there. 
and um, and still there, maybe too present. Like he's the one that's like, well, I'll drive you to the airport. When you're going, like he he's that guy. So unconsciously, I find myself um, always wanting someone that can protect and provide. And so like with my current boyfriend, like one of the first things he told me was he goes, I'm he has two he has two daughters, and he said I'm not gonna treat you any way that I wouldn't treat I wouldn't want someone to treat my girls. And nobody ever said that to me, so I was like, okay. So, all right, I'm, I'm loving it. So that was really important. So unconsciously, I see myself um, finding that kind of man. And I've actually dated a few guys in talking to their moms. <laughs> I've literally had someone's mom tell me, oh, I was so glad when my son brought you home. I told him, quit dating them girls. They ain't got no daddy. They don't know what it's like. And I was like, oh. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. And I was like, how so? They go, they don't, know what, they, don't know, they don't know what no family looks like, and they don't understand what normalcy looks like with this and what how families oh operate. God. And I'm like, okay, well, well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. So, But I've gotten that from more than one mom when I've dated men. So, so I, I'm going to say this, uh, and, and, and I'm glad I heard from all you ladies about that. Stacey, do you have a dad? Now, it works. It's a flip side to it on, on for the men too, because as a man, to have a figure to teach you how to be a man. When I came up, my dad was around. My mom and dad was together till I was nine. He was around th- throughout the rest of my life, but he wasn't in that house. I had my older brother. That. Taught me like a man. We had to, damn it, he had to learn how to be a man and teach me how to be one too. Now, I'm not going to say that it was great. It was a lot of bad shit came along with it. But, but, the right and the wrong part of it, I got it. Now, how to treat a woman, I had to learn, kind of learn that on my own. Uh, what to, what to, I, I can't, so in other words, my mom was a single mom, so I knew how I wanted my mom to feel. Question. Yeah. You said you had a daughter. Did your daughter change you to how you started treating women after you had your daughter? Well, it's, it was between my mom and my daughter. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I'm a mama's boy. Oh. I love What's my, I, I love my mother. So, when she married my stepdad, when she married my stepdad, yeah, he was there. He taught us some things, but it wasn't always, hell, I smoked weed with my stepdad when we was 15, 16 years old. He was like your friend? He was like a partner. A partner. Okay. He let us smoke weed, let us drink. We can have girls at the highs. So, was that a, a good example? Maybe not. But that's, a, that's how I grew up. Did it make me a bad man? No, it didn't. But to r- really learn how to love a woman and how to treat a woman, you, you see the bad part of how that, I saw the bad part of how my stepdad treated my mama, mm-hmm. and I didn't want that. And I didn't want to treat a woman like that. And then when my daughter did come, I knew, all right, this is what, you know, I got to set the example. Now, I'm not going to say that I was perfect. and I wasn't, I wasn't a perfect dad and still ain't. But I knew I couldn't do everything that I'm, 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 I used to do around her. Because she'll see that and be like, oh, man, this, you know. Think it's okay. Yeah. Having different women coming in and out of the house and things like that. Couldn't do that. I couldn't have that revolving door no more once she came and stayed with me. I will say, on my list of dating, I prefer to date men who are raised by husbands. Yeah. Okay. It's not mandatory, but it's a preference. And I actually have been treated better by men who have daughters then who don't? And I don't know if it's they have a softer heart or it's a different type of, like, softness and gentlemanness and, like, 
nurturing that comes that I've gotten that I've picked up more with men that have daughters that then don't. Well, let me ask you a question since we're speaking on that. Uh-huh. You had a man that had had a daughter. What about when that daughter <laughs> starts being, you know, with her dad? Uh-huh. Like, now nah, you, I'm, I'm the princess. I'm because it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my daughter's done it before. Like, nah, that's my dad. That's my dad. You, you know, o- overprotective. Which I told, and I, I, I get it, and I respect it. And I think it's also one. I'm not getting introduced to anybody's kids until we like, like them, like them. I don't violate that space. I don't think that she should know who I am or know that you have women around you unless me and you are for real, for real, something serious. And knowing that you have been her hero, her man, her this, that, and the other, I'm going to understand that coming into the situation, and I'm going to try to develop a relationship with her so that she knows who I am and knows that when I'm not here today, gone tomorrow, like I really do value your dad, I respect him, I love him, and I have love for you too, and like let's develop a relationship so that you trust me with your dad and that you know what I'm saying you don't think of me as just someone that's going you know what I'm saying do him harm or whatever the case but I think it's important to respect the relationship that a daughter has with her dad <clears throat> expect it and try to tread lightly coming into it respectful of her now I have not had a situation where I have not been able to win a daughter over that would be something different but I, I haven't had that one I but I, oh I'm gonna let you tell yours then. go ahead no I'll, it's, it's a, just a quick one we had, I had gone on vacation. He took my, my boys and his girls, and we went on a joint vacation. And we had, like, rules, you know, guys over here, girls over here, no, no coming to common area. You had to be dressed, all those good things. But even at night when we would sit and watch TV, the little girl would come get in between me. You know this, my daddy? Yeah. Yeah. My mama told me to be nice to you. <laughs> I said, just be you. Just be you. Don't be, to not because your mama told you to. Just be you. You know, and that's kind of how, well, what ended up happening is her sister wouldn't comb her hair, and I had to comb her hair. So then, it, it, there it, you it, go. It, I bet you don't even know how to comb hair. I said, I don't. And I started to just <laughs> pull it. But I was, I was <laughs> nice, made it all pretty, made her extra pretty. She took a picture and sent home to her mama. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> I that, love that. that that's the thing. Like, <laughs> With little girls, it's like if you make sure that they know we're not competition. Yeah. We both love the same person, and you make it fun. Like when they're little, I'd be like, well, what, what outfit do you think Daddy would like on me? You think he'll like this one or this one? And be like, well, you know, I really want to get some ice cream. If you ask Daddy, I think he'll say yes. If I ask Daddy, we're going to get a no. Can you help me? And make it fun. Well, so that's the little girl. Now, that teenage age... Yeah, you just you still teenagers. You could do the same but, thing. You just have to do it in a more age appropriate way. But but see, so when when my daughter was with me, she was thir- she, she she came with me. She was thirteen. She was in middle school, so <laughs> my daughter knew how to play the game a little bit. So she like, oh, I know how to get this here. I'm gonna call Miss. <laughs> hey, Miss such and such, kid. My daddy ain't gonna do it. Could, could you help me with this Ooh. and that? And next thing you know, where the hell you get that from? <laughs> Smart. Oh, Miss Hutch says, brought up. Oh, you little, <laughs> you. She's smart. She knew how to play the game. She knew she can, she can get that from her. I will say this: the question was originally, you know, what is based on uh, the premise of whether or not you had a father in your, in your household, does that dictate how you view men and what your relationships are with men? Yeah. So I have, like, I'm from, like, a non-traditional, non-stereotypical single-parent household, right? Okay. So my mom, so it should be the stereotype, but it's, non, it's not the traditional stereotype. So it's the exact opposite of what should have come about in my circumstances. You know, a single parent household. Um, My mom was remarried. Um, My dad, he was 
he was active. I mean, he was present. He wasn't necessarily active, but he worked a lot. He was an engineer. He is an engineer. Um, my stepdad, an attorney, right? And when they got divorced, my dad and my stepdad have always been present in my life. But the most uh, instrumental man in my life was my uncle who lived next door to me. So he literally taught me everything, how to fish, how to change a tire. He really wanted to equip me to be able to do everything in life. And going back to like, so my dad is Jehovah's Witness. So my mom wanted to instill in me, you know, that, that feeling of receiving a father's love. Because as a child, you would presume that if you're not getting this attention during these times that's special to you, that you're not special to him. So my mom, even as a single mom, she would, who was not with my dad, she would mail me birthday cards. She would mail me Christmas gifts, go to the post office, and mail it right back to us to our house so that I did not ever feel an absence of a male presence in my life. When it came down to homecoming awards, my uncles were always present. My stepdad or my, you know, my grandparents. So what, how does that impact me as an adult? Well, I'm divorced, right? I was married for like, ten, for about 10 and a half years. I was with my ex for 17 years. You know, we were really young, much like you. I got married young because, yes, I always had a male a father presence in my life. So it made sense to me. So that's what I mean by non-traditional, stereotypical black home. <coughs> um, what does it, how, how does that impact my relationship with men? Well, it gives me the independence that people often associate with strong women. However, I love men, I love black men, and I know that you're capable of these things because I saw it. So I also don't waste my time on people that can't fulfill the promise of what I've seen my entire life. So it's not that I'm over-independent. I'm just under-interested in anybody that's not wow. meeting the standard. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Last, once again, like, like I said, I, last week I had the guys. This week I got the ladies from that point of view of, of life. And... I know we could really just talk about this shit like all night, and I and and I haven't had any rebuttal with you ladies on, on none of this, only because I know I won't win the fight. <laughs> I'm a smart man. I'm a smart man, so I don't I don't I don't argue with women at all. I, I'm I'm a non-confrontational. I, I am. You can ask my wife. My wife, she want to argue, and I'll be like just sitting there. I ain't got nothing to say, you know. All right, I, let's get to the point and let's get this shit over with, so we can kind of move on from this. And you know, that's just how I am, and she knows that. And I know she's gonna watch the shit and she's gonna say that. <laughs> but you know, just learning things because as men, we can always learn more about women, just like women can learn more about us. Because I've had. <laughs> I've had an old school guy tell me one time, <laughs> he said, young blood, all of them crazy. What? I said, <laughs> hold on, hold on. I say, huh? He said, yeah, even your mama. Even my mama. And, and, and this is just old school talk, you know, guys talking. And I know, and they agree. <laughs> They agree with it, and we're going to have them on next week, and this shit going to be really hilarious next week because all y'all going to be in there together. But just learning the different things, because like I said, the credit shit, I didn't know nothing about that. Fellas in the background back there, y'all know anything about credit? No, see? That, they got wives. About, no, no, I know they don't. Not all of them. Uh, raise your hand if you're single. Oh. See? See, and they don't they don't know they don't know about credit. They, have a girl ever tell y'all and I got them in the background. Have a girl ever tell y'all about credit? Never asked y'all about But you look like you got good credit. You do which how like are over seven, huh? Hold on, let me tell you over something. Over seven fifty? 
No, let me tell you. Let me hold on. Time out, Stacy. Time out. Time out. It's eight hundred, ain't it? Listen to me. Hold on. When I say when I say time out on the play, hold on, Stacy. <laughs> hold on. Listen to me. These niggas that walk in with jewelry and all that and this and that, you know, all of them ain't got shit. Apple pay. And I'm not saying that he ain't I mean, got, got shit because that's my partner one. over there. But you going by what he look like. You going by what he look like. He may not have shit. But let's talk about it. Because if you really want to know, so if you want to know how women go into something with a stereotype, more women, many women know. Men who have um, an advanced palate, who know how to choose cigars, whose pastimes are much like this, a lot of women know that Y'all have some kind of concept of a credit score by now. You have a little something going on in your life because clearly you're choosing to indulge in the finer things. Okay, let me ask you this still. And we can go around this room. When you first, let's just say, let's just say me, for example. You first met me. In your mind, did you feel like I had good credit? I did. You did? You were a business owner, so I knew it was 50-50. I felt like it was good enough to get an SBA loan. <laughs> yes! Uh, yes! 680 yes. and above. <laughs> 680 and above. <laughs> okay. And, 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 and anybody it, it, it else? Depends. And I, and, it and, depends. It depends on you're a sole proprietor here's what, here's or what, not. And here's what we, here's the, reason why I'm, the reason why I'm asking that is because that we are... Oh man, I got Brad Jordan talking about time I and all that. Brad, you didn't want to sit in on this hill, so. Hey. <laughs> Since when has that been a problem? Brad, you want to say something? That's important. I said something. No, no you, you want to. So, here's the thing I didn't know women asked about credit score with guys now. I just found it out. Come on, sit down. <laughs> what? Tell us more. Hey, no, you got your, Don't we, ask me my credit score. We don't even man. ask about credit. We don't even ask credit scores. We we we, we got to show credit scores. Right there. Show me yours. Show me yours. I'll show you mine. <laughs> oh, you sure? But here's the thing. So no, I'm not sure. Oh, Don't do that. I appreciate it though. Okay. So this is how you know you're coming into the conversation late and just trying to be one of those com- men with time. Stacy. Do Whoa, not too because earlier, earlier in the conversation, we established. That not a now woman should be concerned with asking, pressing a man well, so, so over these out. things so why, why without you presenting for coming the same in? Thing. He, he started the question. He started that. I, it was based off what you were speaking on earlier, which what I, I was speaking on. I just walked in. It, what what he was speaking on. Oh, what he was speaking. Yeah, on. that's your conversation is directed toward him. My bad. My my my. What I said to him was, do they ask? You guys for your credit score. That's my question. And your answer is? If it, don't, okay, wait. If it comes up, like, okay, like we talked about, if it comes up in the conversation where we're being intentional. And how, and how long, I'm, I'm not to cut okay. you up, but how long have, have, have you guys yeah. been going out to where credit scores even come into play? And that's what I was saying. It's a matter of if the relationship is at a point where we are intentional and in going forward, and I need to understand you as hotels, and you understand me. Are we going so, <laughs> Are we going forward and 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 and, and uh, as a couple, like, yes, like, like actually moving in together? Or are we just no, no, no? It's like we're talking about marriage. We're talking about longevity. We're talking about being together. I would hope marriage, but that don't. That's not for everybody. But it is a matter of a relationship at that level. And I think at that point, yes, I'm asking his, and I'm showing mine as well. Well, that, uh, perfect. But it should be like. 
let, 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 let's work on our credit together as a as a union. As a oh, union, that's as cute. A I've union, tried that before. As a union, um, doesn't work. But I do. I will say, when I first moved to Houston on a first date, I had a man ask me how much money I made. Now he used to sell crack, and <laughs> so I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thi- you know what I'm talking about, right? That's, the end, that's the end of the date. So yeah. So how I'm long, thinking, wait, how long ago was this? 2020. A motherfucker still selling crack in 2020? No, 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 I'll, no, no, I'll be no, 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 the date was in 2020. The date, no, the date was in 2020, no, that was the only date. The date was in 2020, he sold the crack, and what date was it, what was that, like, uh, 2001, 2002. God damn, he's still selling, who you selling well, crack to? Well, he still to? had the record, he had the record. It was, it was during COVID. I had no business on that date. I was just trying to get out of the house. So, Simone, he still had residual crack money. He, he had residual. I think he was still moving things. He had a logistics company. You know, that's what they always do. Logistics. Okay, now you're moving the crack. You're not selling it on the street corner anymore. Oh. Oh, no, he, he drove like, trucks. He did concrete foundation. Drove trucks. <laughs> Look at that CDL Shit, going to work. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the next question? Whatever you want to ask. This is so, this is bad. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible. Like, like my, my question is always, my, my question is, my, my question is this. Like, what is these niggas talking about? God damn, Junior. <laughs> Put Tell us cam- what's wrong hey, with put that. The Tell over us what's there. wrong with women these days. No, ain't nothing wrong with women these days. But the question is, what do you bring to the table besides what you you know? Slim, get them. <laughs> and, 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 and 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 trust me, it's not it's not a bad it's it's not a it's, it's the question is not meant to be uh, 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 accusatory, not cu- inflammatory. It's inflammatory. not to piss you off. It's like. What, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you all of this, but what do I get in return? So, so if I can answer, please, sir. No, I don't, you can't answer me with no. Let me, <laughs> let me answer. You know we don't even talk like that. I me know. and you. This me and you. No, I love you to death. Don't and don't tell me you're gonna wash my clothes. No, no, no. Your bad no. Boy, I'm like, what what I expect. Table. What I expect, I'm going to give. I'm going to give. I am a giver. That's. There's really been a lot of my issue. I've I've always been a giver. And then you need to reverse and, your role, baby. And and that's what I was gonna say. Because I've, you're a receiver. Let me, let me Women are say. receivers. You have you have people in different roles. No. Okay. No. Period. Let me finish, Brad. Go ahead. Finish. Um, that was my hangup. I guess it's not a negative thing if someone is understanding of. Being a giver and receiving. You got to have it both ways. You can't just be a giver or just a receiver. And I, uh, and trust me, I, I saw a lot of things that I saw that they couldn't understand about me. They were just, okay, well, she's going to just give. She's just going to be a giver, and I'm just going to take. Women are receivers. Not Period. all women. Everybody's that, that, not. I'm, the I'm same. telling you the law of of. of oh. oh, did I? <laughs> Everybody's not the same. They but, not. but women are are receivers. That's why they have what they have, and men are givers. Not that's why all, I'm telling all, you. Listen to what I'm not saying. Not all men. Not that's all what men. I'm. Well, that's that's fine and dandy. But you, but in order for you to give life, you have to receive. For me, that's I have why to I give say it's a give you. and take situation. Understand, understand me, it, and and that's fine for you to be to receive. You should be comfortable with receiving. No, and we back to your 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 main question was. Let me finish. Go ahead when you finish. I'm, 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 I'm gonna get back to that. Okay, guys. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Get in the in the. Oh, go ahead. Get in the. In the mood. To receive, we should be giving. But, but a lot of men but, don't feel like that because a lot of men well, want to give. Should. They fucked up about this. But when we give, what do we get in return is the question. I'm going to give you all of this, but what do I get in return? Am I going to get fucking okay. attitude? When you Am say, I no, fucking, no, no, no. When you Am I going to get fucking flack back? When you gonna, say what a woman bring to the table, 
first of all, what I would tell a man or portray to a man is that I'm going to bring independence. I'm going to let you know you don't have to take care of me. That's number one. But that's like then, well, I know, but I mean, that's what I, I would, you got a man? I would, no, that's why I'm happy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want one though, but you know, you already know me. You know I don't want no relationship. You already know I'm a relationship. But I'm saying if that was if that was given to me, it would be that I'm bringing independence. But you weren't lying. Because independence. You weren't lying because when he says women are receivers, so this is where when we say things sometimes and a man is telling us something and we don't receive it he's and he's trying to tell us, women get mad when there's no reciprocation. So you you give what you what you want to reflect what you want. You put out what you want back. How, that is what it is. Question. He's not lying. I got a question. How is it, how how important is it for you to do what you do for your guy, for your man? Very important. Well, why in the fuck do we tell you we don't like some shit and you still do the shit? Like, I think that every man in here... Because you haven't done what you were supposed to do. The only reason we keep doing what we do is because you haven't did what you were supposed to do. That's not true. That's true. How the fuck is you going to be defined and you're not and you're not by yourself no more? It's two. That's why you ain't got no fucking man. Nah. That's why you don't want no man. That's why she don't want no man. But it, but it, but it... You don't want one. But no, because if We just have... We just are sick of... The BS. There's certain shit that we, y'all we, would do we, that we don't that like. That doesn't mean that I, I hear that all Give the me, time. Okay, example like what? Yeah, say it now, stop. I hear that all the time. A lot of I, women, I, I, a lot of men though. say, well, that's why you're by yourself. This is this, no, this is that. No, Come on. No, no. You got a she lot of quality. She said she wanted to be, but she want to be by herself. There's y'all a, want men. Y'all different than her. It's different. No, because if it's my man wait, and he wait, say, what, him, what, is, what is on your, your man spirit? Say, listen. What, what is on your wait, spirit? Me, what is the root of the issue? Because you have something sitting on your soul that you are not happy about. And I, and I, and, and, and there I, I did a disclaimer. So I did a what, disclaimer. What are you looking for? What is the real I did, question? I did a disclaimer in the beginning when I sat down. I said, this is not. is really on your for, soul. This is, this is not for inflammatory measures. This is just questions, right? If that man say he don't like. Eyelashes that wash the fucking windshield. Honey, that, oh, okay, well that shit ain't cute. That shit ain't cute regardless. So, no. About how y'all feel about our eyelashes? I'm trying to execute a fabulous photo, and it looks fabulous with and eyelashes that can cool off a room. I don't care about <laughs> your. Yeah, what he say, right? Wow. Fuck that. You gonna wear them motherfuckers? You right. You My boyfriend off. hates it. And I keep doing it. I don't care. You don't get to tell me what I'm gonna do in Sephora. I'm gonna do what it do. He gonna love them pictures, right? And when I am having a no makeup and ponytail day, that's what you're going to get. And when it's executing, thank you. All right, all right. But there's a root to this, and I need to know what it is. I love it. Here's the thing about it. Now, yeah, he, he asked his question. He wanted to know. He wanted to know, and that's just what it was. And and and, and here's, a, here's, a, here's the thing about it. Now, we didn't have opinions from all you ladies. You ladies have been beautiful ladies from whatever age uh, age range you are in it got a different perspective because you had a different point in your life and that was that was really important about this cell because you can hear one thing from somebody at this age and then somebody that's established at another one and it, and it, and that's and that's what this is about we don't know until we ask and we learn what's going on and what you know we don't we don't know it's all about that and i know i'm pretty sure like i asked them guys about the whole credit thing they didn't none of them know nothing about that shit N- no, none of them it, yeah but 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 my but the thing is and we we for the wrap up but the thing about that is this that i was hooking somebody up with somebody else and that's the first thing she asked right off the bat and, and 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 we ain't, we ain't got to get get into that anymore. But I'm just saying, like I, it fucked me up. It fucked me up because you that's what she said about. I have a question. How old was that young lady? Because I've I've never. Do, I'm not concerned with that. I don't know. She next door. I'm gonna ask her. The fact. No one asked that. No one with common sense. 
when ask I asked that, that first. as soon as you enter the room. Oh, that is an advanced question. Unless all she cared about is money. Well, Correct. well. But before we wrap this up, oh, apparently, talking point. A, apparently she that has lady has, offer. apparently she has no common sense. I, <laughs> I'm just saying, that's just what it was. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not saying her name. I mean, no, yeah. it just, it is what it is. She don't have common sense to get to know somebody and then see where it goes. See if that's even relevant. Because I know with my part, that's a that's a, yeah, and and. and I, and before, like I say, well, how many minutes I got? None. Okay, so, because I know with my friends, the, the guys I hang around, and the guys that I know, I know what's on their mind, and I know what they like, and I know what they want. Now, it would have been different if my boy was like, shit, I just really want to get to know her, and maybe, but when she said that, he was already like, oh, I'm good. Rightfully so. You know why? Because it's rude. Basically, how I look at it is that your credit score is your financial social security number. It's, it's the same thing. That is something personal to you. And until you're in a place where you would share your social with somebody, you would share your mama's maiden name, then it ain't their business. If, so, if so, they're not in it that deep with you, and, they don't need to know. And so I understand. I, and I understand that. And I ain't want to get back on the credit shit because I'll for the I'll for the. No, shit the, I was I shit. was agreeing with you. So I was so with so, you. but but when we was talking about friends hooking up with friends and things like that, I don't want no woman to ask me to hook me up with one of my friends because I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> what do you want from them? But that'll be the first. That'll but be the she first told question. What she wanted by asking what was his credit score? No, so, no, I ain't talking about the credit score no more. No I'm talking saying, about overall. Period. Yeah. A woman should not ask me about my friends. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if you're a good woman. I'm not. I'm. I'm a. Well, because you, no, because you know what. Because the thing is, you know the vibe you're getting from. Her. You know the vibe you're getting from that woman, so you know if she's good or what she's really about. So. If a woman asks me about one of my partners and I know she all about she loosey goosey, nah. Oh yeah, I'm, oh yeah. Let me let me tell you let me tell you about my partner. But if she a good woman and got her shit going on, and nah, you don't want to fuck with her. I, I, I ain't yeah, got no homeboys yeah, yeah. like that. I mean, I'm just being real with her because at the end of the day, I'm not gonna. I, I don't want that. Can I? Because can I, I know what my friends are like. Yeah, go ahead, Stacey. I just want to say this because I know we we closing it up. I will ask you about your birthday, your birth month, day, and year. And it's not to know, no, 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 it's not to know your astrological sign. It's just so I can give it to Simone so she can run a background check on you. Yay! That is it. I am a private investigator in addition to being an attorney. Now, I will run that background check on you through Miss Simone, but we ain't to your social, I mean, your credit score yet. All right. All right, ladies. It's been one hell of a show, and I want to thank all you lovely, lovely, beautiful black ladies from all walks of life, from all over the country. I thank you, I thank you ladies so much for being a part of Big Stick Energy. Now, next week, y'all excited for that. <laughs> next week, I will have my guys to come in. Um... Oh, man. I, I, yeah, I have my guys to come in next week. And we're going to mix and mingle in this hill because I got their perspective on things. I got two latest perspectives on, on some things. And now it's time to put it all together because I wasn't going to argue with none of you. I wasn't going to argue with none of y'all because I wasn't going to win that fight because I'm a smart man. Now, if I have backup, that's different. Every man need to know they roll and know what you know what they supposed to do. But here's what we're doing. So next week on Big Stick Energy, we're gonna bring the guys in, and I thank y'all for coming out. Uh, not coming out. I thank you guys, ladies, for coming out, and I thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for watching Big Stick Energy. Next week gonna be a whole nother subject. We got a whole nother thing. We're gonna intertwine. We're gonna talk about a lot of stuff. I want y'all to make sure y'all tune in. With us right here at the den, Quad Houston is one of our sponsors. Also, was the food good? Delicious. Delicious. And the, drink. the drinks were good too. Yes. yes. 
<laughs> cool, cool. Hey, Quad Houston, that's what we do right here. So, coming at you again, I'm your boy Pop. The Den, 4608 Almeda. Make sure you come in, have a smoke with us. Ladies, once again, I appreciate you so much. I, I thank you, ladies, and coming at the uh, last notice. And I know, uh, I know, uh, Snapper back there, she wanted to talk about fucking, but that, yeah. <laughs> But we're gonna get in, we're gonna we're gonna get into that later. She's I a. <laughs> I need some chips. I'm single now. So 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 we we'll, so we'll get into that next week, just for her. Oh Lord! Wow. It's gonna be on next week. Make sure y'all stay in. Forty six oh eight Almeda. The den. It's your boy Pop. Big stick energy. That's all I got to say. I'll let you later. Oh, well, I never pull up with that list in the fold. Yeah, I smoke cigars. It ain't just for the show. I'm blessed from the dope. And no for my city. I send a nigga, baby, if I